Slavery in Russia was officially abolished in 1723, when Peter the Great converted household slaves to serfs. In 2013, Global Slavery Index reported that unsatisfactory living conditions of migrant workers who for a number of reasons cannot obtain work permits in Russia but continue to work in the country illegally and for minimum wage. History In Kievan Rus and Muscovy, legal systems usually referred to slaves as kolopi. A kolops master had unlimited power over his life, he could kill him, sell him, or use him as payment upon a debt. The master, however, had responsibility before the law for his kolops actions. Individuals could become kolop as a result of capture, selling themselves, being sold for debts, committing crimes, or marriage to a kolop. Until the late 10th century, the kolopi represented a majority among the servants who worked lord's lands. The Russian lands continued in their historic function as a source of slaves for outsiders. For example, in 1382 the Golden Horde under Khan Takhtemish sacked Moscow, burning the city and carrying off thousands of inhabitants as slaves. Similar raids occurred routinely until well into the 16th century. In 1521, the combined forces of Crimean Khan Mehmed I Guri and his Kazan allies attacked Moscow and captured thousands of slaves. In 1571, the Crimean Tatars attacked and sacked Moscow, burning everything but the Kremlin and taking thousands of captives as slaves. In Crimea, about 75% of the population consisted of slaves. Crimean Nogai raids into East Slavic lands continued into the 18th century. Russian slavery did not have racial restrictions. Russian girls were legally allowed to be sold in Russian-controlled Novgorod to Tatars from Kazan in the 1600s by Russian law. Germans, Poles, and Lithuanians were allowed to be sold to Crimean Tatars in Moscow. In 1665 Tatars were allowed to buy from the Russians, Polish and Lithuanian slaves. Before 1649 Russians could be sold to Muslims under Russian law in Moscow. This contrasted with other places in Europe outside Russia where Muslims were not allowed to own Christians. Anonymous Lithuanian author wrote in De Moribus Tartarorum, Lituanorum et Moscorum, among these unfortunates there are many strong ones, if they the Tatars, have not castrated them yet, they cut off their ears and nostrils, burned cheeks and foreheads with the burning iron and forced them to work with their chains and shackles during the daylight, and sit in the prisons during the night, they are sustained by the meager food consisting of the dead animal's meat, rotten, full of worms, which even a dog would not eat. The youngest women are kept for wanton pleasures. By the 16th century, the slave population of the Grand Duchy of Moscow consisted mostly of those who had sold themselves into slavery owing to poverty. They worked predominantly as household servants, among the richest families, and indeed generally produced less than they consumed. Laws forbade slave owners to free slaves in times of famine in order to avoid feeding them, and slaves generally remained with their owning family for a long time. The Domestroy, an advice book, speaks of the need to choose slaves of good character and to provide for them properly. Slavery remained a major institution in Russia until 1723, when Peter the Great converted the household slaves into house serfs. The government of Tsar Fyodor III had formally converted Russian agricultural slaves into serfs earlier. In 1679, indigenous peoples of Siberia, notably the Yakuts and the Buryats of eastern Siberia, practiced slavery on a small scale. With the conquest of Siberia in the 16th and 17th centuries, Russians enslaved natives in military operations and in Cossack raids. Cases involving native women were frequent, hold as concubines, sometimes mortgaged to other men and traded for commercial profit. The Russian government generally opposed the conversion of natives to Christianity because it would free them from paying the yasik, the fur tribute. The government decreed that the non-Christian slaves were to be freed. This in turn led local Russian owners of slaves to petition the government for conversion and even involved forced conversions of their slaves. The rules stipulated that the native convert became a serf of the converter. As an indication of the extent of the slavery system, one voivoda reported in 1712 that, "...there is hardly a Cossack in Yakutsk who does not have natives as slaves." Russian conquest of the Caucasus led to the abolition of slavery by the 1860s and the conquest of the Central Asian Islamic Khanates of Bukhara, Samarkand, and Kiva by the 1870s. The Russian administration liberated the slaves of the Kazakhs in 1859. 
A notorious slave market for captured Russian and Persian slaves was centered in the Khanate of Kiva from the 17th to the 19th century. At the beginning of the 21st century Chechens and Ingush kept Russian captives as slaves or in slave-like conditions in the mountains of the Northern Caucasus. Recent 2009 reports have identified human trafficking and slavery of Uzbekistan and Kazakhstan nationals in contemporary Russian society. See also Serfdom in Russia Lovisa von Berghausen Forced labor in the Soviet Union Cultural assimilation Discrimination Equal rights History of slavery in Asia Universal Declaration of Human Rights <laughs>